Today I've got all the news for you, starting with NVIDIA unveiling their new program along with next-gen architecture. NVIDIA GPUs just got a huge update, new desktop CPU competitor, and the RTX 5000 series is worse than we thought. And really quickly, I know I've been doing a lot of talking head videos lately, but with Computex here, there's a lot to cover, and this really is the best way to do it. Either way, let's get right to it. Starting things off, NVIDIA just unveiled their new program called the SFF Ready Enthusiast GeForce Cards and compatible cases. For those who don't know, SFF stands for Small Form Factor, and Small Form Factor PCs are getting more and more popular. But as NVIDIA states, there are challenges remaining, things like the fact that prospective buyers have to dive into specification sheets and ask other enthusiasts whether there's available space and clearance for parts, cables, and assembly. And as they state, GeForce RTX graphics cards come in all shapes and sizes, and though partners' pages list product dimensions, clearances for power cables and connectors generally aren't referenced, necessitating guesswork and further research to ensure, yeah, basically, there's a lot of things you have to do to make sure that the components that you're purchasing actually work with a small form factor build. And NVIDIA's goal here is to basically make this easier. And they're doing that by introducing new requirements and things like that that you have to have, that you have to follow to be called a SFF ready enthusiast GeForce card. As you can see here, it does require an RTX 4070 or higher, but that's because this is an enthusiast GeForce card. This is part of the enthusiast program. So obviously it does need to be pretty powerful, it needs to be a certain maximum height, maximum length, all of this stuff. So then you could say, okay, this is SFF ready according to NVIDIA. And as you can see right down here, as of June 2nd, 2024, there are 36 GeForce RTX 40 series enthusiast graphics cards that meet the SFF ready guideline from NVIDIA and our partners. And those GPUs are here. Of course, I will have a link to this down in the description below if you're interested in checking this out. But not only that, they also talk about case compatibility. You can see here that they have certain requirements here as well. And you will also find here a selection of small form factor cases compatible with SFF Ready Enthusiast GeForce cards. So basically NVIDIA is getting together with both board partners as well as PC case makers to kind of have a list of cases and cards that will actually go together well, give you enough room and still be considered small form factor. But that wasn't the only thing announced by NVIDIA at Computex, as they also revealed their next generation GPU architecture. And what's wild is that once again, leaks were right here. This one was leaked by copite 7 Kimmy, claiming that the next gen architecture name is codenamed Vera Rubin. And for those who don't know, Vera Florence Rubin was an American astronomer who pioneered work on galaxy rotation rates. As you can see right here, they're planning to release a Rubin GPU as well as Vera CPU and then a Rubin Ultra GPU. And of course, it's pretty wild that NVIDIA is already talking next gen when just a few months ago, they announced Blackwell. Basically, AI is moving and it's moving fast. And next up, if you remember a little while back, I went over a new desktop app from NVIDIA for their NVIDIA GeForce GPUs. That one was simply called the NVIDIA app. And of course it was replacing the GeForce Experience app. And at the time, one of the really interesting things about it was that it didn't require you to log in. Well, NVIDIA just announced quite a bit new features for it in a beta update. Starting things off, as you can see right down here, it now supports recording of your games in the AV1 codec, specifically up to 120 FPS in SDR and HDR video encoding. Moving on, the much more interesting of the two, NVIDIA just announced one-click automatic GPU tuning. And this is, of course, for anyone who's been wanting to overclock their GPU, but they've been a little apprehensive. Simply put, just because GPUs have, of course, gotten significantly better over the years when it comes to manually overclocking, it's much harder to damage it, but it is still possible. And of course, if that were to happen and they found out, it would, of course, void your warranty. 
but with this auto overclocking, it does not. With that said, as they state, overclocking your GPU may cause your PC to become unstable or show visual artifacts in certain titles, but auto tuning will not damage your GPU or invalidate its warranty. One thing that is pretty cool if you wanna see kind of how it works, it says, well, it talks about accessing it, but then it says, our app will test your GPU's capabilities over the course of 10 to 20 minutes, during which time we recommend letting your system idle, otherwise results may be affected. Basically, this reminds me of some of the stuff that AMD does with auto overclocking, and it's obviously great to see it come to GeForce GPUs. And next up, if you've been following the channel, to which if you aren't, you definitely want to subscribe for all the latest PC hardware news. But if you have, you know that I've been talking about Qualcomm's upcoming Snapdragon X Elite chips for a little while now. Those chips are ARM based, but they're made for Windows, which is of course a really big deal because up until now, for the most part, x86 has completely dominated the industry. Well, at the time, it had looked like the only thing that they were coming to were notebooks, but apparently that's not the case. As you can see right here, this comes from Qualcomm's Computex keynote, but during it, you can see it says Snapdragon chips were typically used in mobile and low power devices, but during the presentation, Amon announced that the Snapdragon X and Copilot Plus are, quote, coming to all PC form factors, meaning we're also talking desktop PCs. That's right, for anyone who was at least a little bit excited about Qualcomm's upcoming chip, you can now get even more excited, though obviously it's likely not gonna compare to some of the best desktop CPUs on the market right now, but still, this is really exciting. As you can see right down here, they also talked about uh, NPU performance and they stated that theirs comes with over five times higher performance at lower thermals than Intel's Core Ultra 7 155H. They also talk about a massive jump in battery life. They then go over faster web browsing and its class. I mean, this is wild and it's really not looking good for current x86 chips. Think Intel and AMD. And lastly for today, while I recently went over the fact that AMD announced pretty much all of their CPUs at Computex, we're talking Ryzen 9000, we're also talking that new weird name of Ryzen AI, and of course, we knew a lot of this thanks to leaks. Oh, and if you're interested in picking any of those up, I will have affiliate links down in the description below for when they're released. It doesn't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Regardless, with all of that said, NVIDIA did not announce their next-gen RTX 50 GPUs, but we do have a new leak from well-known leaker Copite 7 Kimmy, and unfortunately, it is not looking good. As you can see right here, it states, I will say GB20X will have the same GPC count than 8100X, except GB207 and 8107. And for those who don't know, GPC stands for Graphics Processing Clusters. And what these are, are the higher up units of clusters that have SMs inside of them, then those obviously make up the CUDA cores. Well, in this case, it looks like GPC count is gonna remain the same for most GPUs. In fact, it seems that it's mostly all of them except for the highest in one. As you can see here, video cards asked, is GB202 still double GB203? Well, GB202 is still 12 by eight. And what he means by that, I know this sort of gets confusing, but this more or less helps quite a bit. The eight is times two SMs, at least if things do stay the same between last gen and current gen. So it's eight times two, which makes 16, and then 16 times 12 is 192. And you'll obviously notice that that is quite a bit more cores than the current 8102 GPU that makes up the RTX 4090. So this will ultimately be made into the RTX 5090, but then when we move down to the GB203 and on, you'll see right here, GB203 is not six times eight, just like how this one was 12 times eight times two. This is not gonna be, as he says, six times eight by two. Instead, it's seven times six by two, which is exactly what last gen's core count was, meaning GB203 that will likely make up the RTX 4080, maybe some other GPUs as well, though hopefully the GB202, some part of that will more or less be cut down into the RTX 5080, 
but as of right now, this will likely be a 5080. And as you can see, it has the same core count as last gen. And then when we move down, you'll notice things are the same for the GB205 and GB206 as well. Basically, this is not looking good for next gen GPUs. Looks pretty great for the RTX 5090, but essentially anything below it, you can see that they're claiming the GB203 will likely make up the RTX 5080, then the 205 will make up the 5070, but it's the same core count as last gen. Of course, there are a few things they can do to make each SM a little bit faster than last gen. They can, of course, up the clocks as well. But historically, one of the biggest ways you up graphics performance in GPUs is to up the amount of cores. Now, what I'm thinking is that maybe NVIDIA, of course, it does take years to make, design, then produce these GPUs. But maybe as soon as NVIDIA heard that AMD wasn't really gonna go all out with their GPUs, NVIDIA may have just said, hey, well, fine, you guys do that, and we're just barely gonna up performance of our next-gen GPUs. And ultimately, if this is true, this is yet more proof why competition is absolutely necessary in the market. So while that does it for today, are you a little bummed about these specs that we're seeing for NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.